Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. So in this video, we'll be looking into all of the React hooks that are present. So we'll be exploring each one of the hook right from scratch, from the basics, and we'll be understanding with the help of our example. So if you find this interesting, please hit the like button and also subscribe for more such content. So let's get started. So firstly, let's understand what exactly are React hooks, right? So hooks allow you to use some state and other React features without writing a class component. So uh, basically, hooks are allowed to be used only in your functional components and not in the class based components right so basically hooks were introduced as a way to add some state and also some lifecycle features to your functional components without converting them uh, to the uh, class based components so that's the basic usage of hooks in react so now let's you know uh, move on to the first hook that we'll be looking into is that is known as the use state hook so use state hook is the most commonly used hook as you all know right so let's understand how exactly a use state hook works and what exactly is a use state hook so in react use state is a hook that allows you to have some state variables in your functional components so it's mainly used to declare some of the state variables in your functional components and and, and it provides a way to update that particular state right so let's understand this with the help of a better example so before this uh, we're gonna you know look into the syntax of the use state hook Okay, so here basically it's gonna take in two values instead of an array. That's what it's gonna return. So here I'm gonna say const. So the first value is known as the state, and the second value is known as the you can call it as modifier or or you can call it as the function that's gonna update this particular state. So here for now I'm just gonna say set state. We're gonna equate it to the use state hook. So I'm gonna say use state that is gonna get imported from React. That's the way we import use state from React right so uh, here uh, uh, inside the use state you can pass in any kind of values it might be a number string or an object right so for now i'm just leaving it as empty so here it is something known as the initial state that is going to be present so i'm going to say initial state yeah so this state is uh, is going to resemble basically the value or the initial state so we can write it as the value or the initial state okay so the set state is basically going to resemble your function or the modifier which is going to update this particular state that is present okay so this is the basic syntax of the use state hook so now let's understand this uh, use state hook with the help of a better example so we'll be building a basic counter that is very simple to build so here i'm going to say build a counter app using use state okay so the counter app works in such a way that we're going to have two buttons the minus button and the plus button and if you press on the plus button we need to increase the uh, value by one and if you press on the minus button you need to decrease the value by one so let's add a button a h2 and again another button let's uh, save the file let's remove the initial state or we would, we would get an error so save the file yeah so as you can see we have the plus button zero and the minus button so let me just change the values over here uh i'm going to keep it as counter and here i'm going to say set counter for the function so this is going to be the value or the initial state that's the first thing inside of the sets i mean inside of the use state syntax and the second part as i told it's going to be the function or the modifier that is going to modify this particular state or it's going to update this particular state that is counter right so now uh, i'm going to provide a default value as i told over here you can provide arrays numbers strings or even objects so currently i'm going to start the counter value from zero so i'm going to just pass in an empty value that is zero if you try and console.log the counter it should give zero because it is going to be equal to whatever the initial state is that is currently zero in this case so i'm going to save the file so now the next step is we're going to initialize the on click function on the plus button over here so i'm going to say on click so here I'm going to say increment. So let's define this function over here. So I'm going to say const increment equals to a normal arrow function. And here we're going to define some logic such that we, uh, if at all we press on the plus button, we're going to increase the state value to be one. And also let's, you know, uh, just access the counter value and it should be zero itself because that is what's the initial state we've given over here. So over here, instead of hard coding zero, I'm just going to say access the counter variable. 
save the file it should be the same thing itself so now over here inside the function increment function i'm going to access the second part of the syntax because this is known as the function i mean this is known as the modifier that is going to update your state right so here i'm going to say set counter and i'm just going to say access the counter value and increase it by one since this is the increment function so let's see if at all this works correctly or not so i'm going to save the file so firstly uh, i'm going to press on the plus button it's going to go to this particular line we have on click to uh, to this it's going to go over here to this function and we're going to say set counter to counter plus one so initially counter value is going to be zero and we're going to say zero plus one set counter to be one so here we would get the value as one and after every state update happens a component the entire component is going to get re-rendered okay that's the way this thing works so as it gets re-rendered we're going to show the updated value of the counter so previously it was zero after executing this line set counter of counter plus one it's going to become one so here we would be seeing one so let's give that a try once so as you can see we're able to see the counter being increased by one all right so now this part is working absolutely fine that is we're able to increase the counter value by one but there is a catch over here that is this is not actually the correct way of you know incrementing the counter value by one we will see that in just a bit uh, that is why it's not the correct way so let's you know take an example so let's say we want to you know execute this particular function multiple number of times inside the same function uh, such that i want to increase the counter value multiple times in a quick succession within the same function right so let's do that so here i'm just gonna say counter plus one and i'm gonna do that one more time so essentially according to our logic what needs to happen is we need to increase the counter value by three times so let's refresh once so the state is not persistent it, it again becomes zero okay so over here if i press on the plus button it should increase the counter value by one two and then three so let's see what exactly is going to happen if i press on plus see it didn't in increase by plus three right it just increased by one which was the previous case itself so what basically happens is when you call the set count of counter plus one multiple number of times in a single succession that two inside of the same function react will not perform multiple state updates separately right so what is going to happen is instead react uh, batches the state updates for performance reasons basically so when you call this you know couple of times or even three or four times so what basically react is going to do over here is react will only perform a single re-render with the final state value that is over here so first it's going to go over here that is set counter of counter plus one so the value becomes one and it, and it goes to the next line over here still the counter value is zero itself so again we're going to increase it by one and the final value is going to it's going to it's going to take the same thing that is zero plus one and after this happens the state is updated and now react performs a re-render and we are able to see the quantity of one so that's the reason this is not the correct way because of this particular case that we have looked into so now the correct way is there is a functional way of you know updating the state so here i'm going to say set counter this is going to take in the function and uh, which is going to give us the previous count whatever it is that that is the exact count right so here i'm going to say previous plus one so in this case how many our times you know encounter or call the set counter function it is going to take in the previous value and then it's going to increment it by that many number of times so currently we are increasing it by one so it's going to increase it by one itself so so as you can see it's increasing properly so in this example we are using the functional way of incrementing the counter value so firstly we are going to say access the previous value that is present and, and increment it by one and in the next uh, line line number 14 we are going to say access the previous value and increment it by two so essentially currently it is zero so the first line should give the value of one it's going to update from zero to one and now the previous value is one so it should increment to one plus two that's going to be three so here we should be seeing three so as you can see that's working absolutely fine so this is how the basic use state works in react okay and of course the state is not persistent we can make it persistent by you know adding some local storage or the database so that's the way the use state works so now we'll be we'll be moving into the next hook that is the use effect hook
So now let's move on to the next hook that is the use effect hook. So we'll understand the use effect hook right from the basics from scratch and we'll understand how exactly we're going to use it in the functional component. So first let's discuss what exactly is a use effect hook, right? So basically the use effect hook allows you to perform different kinds of side effects to your functional components, right? So it basically allows you to perform tasks that do not directly affect the rendering of your functional components. So the basic use case of the use effect hook is, it, it, is, it is basically used for data fetching as we, as we all know that we have done data fetching in the previous projects that we have built and it's also used to you know manipulate the DOM and also used in the subscriptions as well. So we're going to understand the syntax first and we'll understand when exactly a use effect runs in your component, right? So first of all over here, I'm going to initialize my use effect. Import that from React. So it's going to take in a function over here. So I would like to discuss, you know, three case so it becomes simple to understand. So this is the basic, you know, syntax of use effect. So here I'm going to say case one when a no dependency is passed. So apart from this, we have something known as the dependency array that's going to come over here. We could pass it or we, we might not pass it depending on how we want our uh, component to render, right? So here I'm going to say no dependency first. Yeah, so over here, I'm going to say use effect. And that's it. Okay, so no dependency array passed means we, we, we are just not going to pass anything over here. It's going to be as is and whatever is there inside of the use effect, that's gonna be executed. So suppose let's say a function is there to fetch the data, that is gonna get executed. We'll understand each one of the case with the help of an example. So yeah, so as you can see, uh, this use effect is gonna run every once the app component loads, okay? And it's also gonna run every once there is a state update in this particular app component. That's what is the basic understanding of no dependency is passed, right? That's the case number one. So now let's move on to the next case. Okay, that's gonna be case number two. So here I'm gonna say empty array passed. Just like this. So over here, again, let's write the syntax. So here we have something known as the empty dependency array. Right, so this use effect is gonna run only and only once when your app component loads. So basically, whenever this app component renders, this use effect is, is triggered off, and whatever code is there inside of the use effect, maybe a uh, data fetching code that is gonna get executed. Right, so that's it about the case two, and we have the final thing that is case three. Over here, we're gonna include something inside of the dependency arrays. Let's say state variables in dependency array. Okay, again, let's write the use effect. So again, we're gonna initialize the array and we're gonna have, let's say any kind of value over here inside of the array. So this use effect is gonna run every once the app component loads. And again, it's gonna run every once this particular value is changed in your app component, right? So if at all we have any kind of data fetching function over here, it's gonna run the first time when the app component loads, that is when you save the file or when you reload the app. And again, whenever this particular value changes, if at all we have a, a value variable inside of your app, and if that changes, it's gonna run again. So essentially what is common between all the three is, use effect is gonna run every once at least. I mean, it's gonna run compulsorily once when your app component loads. And for the case one, if at all there is any state update, it's gonna run again because there is no dependency array passed. So in our case two, it's only gonna run once when the app component loads. So it's not gonna run again because there is no dependency, uh, I mean, there is no dependency values passed over here. Whereas in case three, it's gonna run every once the value uh, attribute changes or whatever that particular value changes in your app component, right? So hope that part is clear. So now uh, the next thing we'll be looking into is, we're gonna, you know, uh, understand this with the help of uh, example. Let's, you know, let's uh, fetch some data and understand how exactly all of the cases are gonna work. So let's uh, come over here. I'm gonna initialize my use effect. And I'm gonna just, you know, follow the second case for now. And I'm just gonna comment down everything. Just like this, okay. I just want this use effect to run. 
that is this one so i'm just going to go to this uh, fake store api and then get uh let's say all the products over here so let's come back over here and i'm gonna paste it over here so essentially we are going through the data fetching part of the use effect so here uh, automatically we're just gonna say console.log of json so it should give us all of the products that this api has right so here as you can see we are following case number two that is an empty array pass so as soon as i save the file this app component is going to get rendered and this is going to get triggered off so use effect is going to run only once and you should be seeing the products in the console because we have given a console.log of json so let's save the file let's refresh over here yeah so as you can see you're able to see the products coming so essentially you're able to see two times so it's, it's actually rendering only one time so you're seeing it two times because of one thing that is if you check out your index yeah index.js it's because of the react strict mode that we have used right if you if you just remove this and if you can save the file you should be seeing it just one time as you can see so that's the reason you're seeing it two times so save the file so yeah that part is working fine you're able to see how exactly the, the data is getting fetched and how exactly the user effect is getting triggered off when we call the function inside of our empty dependency array yeah so now let's move on to the next case that is the first case that is no dependency array passed okay so i'm just going to clear the console and i'm going to save the file okay so as you can see it's going to call one time when the app component loads so now we have an empty dependency array right there is no dependency array passed i mean sorry there is no dependency array passed so here what should happen is whenever there is a state update it should call the use effect again so let's make a state update we already have the previous counter so let's just increase it by one so i've given a default value of four so if i press on plus it should it should increase the value to five and as soon as it increases we have a state update in the app component so again this use effect is triggered off and again it's going to execute whatever is there from the start to end so again essentially in the console we should see the product showing up so let's give that a try so as you can see the state got updated and over here in the console the, the use effect again ran and you should and you're seeing again the same set of products in the console okay because there's a state update uh, that has happened in your app component right so that's the way the first case works that is a use effect without the dependency passed so now let's move on to the next case that is state variables in dependency array so here i'm gonna pass in my dependency array and i'm gonna pass in my counter over here and i'm gonna save the file i'm gonna refresh the app over here yeah so as soon as i refreshed it ran for the first time so you're able to see it over here that is whatever is there inside of the console so now uh, whenever the counter value changes again it's gonna run that's what the case 3 says right so if i press if i press on the plus button counter is initially four that's the default value given so it's going to go over here to this function counter becomes five so since the counter values change from four to five again this use effect is going to run one more time so let's give that a try so as you can see counter value changed from four to five and in the console again our use effect is going to run so let's run through one more example so let's go over here again so we can make use of this one that is the limit it's going to give us the products based on the limit we pass so i'm going to make use of my backticks over here and we're going to dynamically render the quantity so basically i'm going to render the counter itself whatever the counter value is so save the file let's come back over here so as you can see you're able to see it uh, four times because the limit is four and the counter value is initially four and again over here i want to run this use effect only once when the counter value changes so as soon as the counter value changes even the number of products should increase because we have given it dynamically over here so initially we have four products i mean initially the counter value is four so we're getting four so as soon as i press on the plus button it should come into five and we should be seeing five products so as you can see that's working pretty fine okay so that's the way the use effect works so you would understand use effect better when you build your own kinds of projects and understand how exactly the user effect is being run in the app with all the three cases being defined right so that that would be a better suggestion to understand so this would just give you an understanding of what are the different cases and how exactly the user effect is being run in your component
so use effect are also used for cleaning up as well so some effects uh, require basically some cleanup to reduce the memory leaks so if you would remember we would write something known as return unsubscribe at the bottom part of the use effect basically at the end of the use effect so that is basically used to clean up the function and to reduce the memory leak in the entire app right so you would understand that better when we build the projects and explore how exactly that's going to work so that's the basic usage of use effect and, and along with this you can also implement something known as the DOM manipulations as well okay so this is the basic understanding of use effect so now let's move on to the next hook that is the use memo hook so now let's move on to the next hook that is the use memo hook so basically use memo is a hook that lets you catch the result and helps in preventing the re-rendering of your component okay so it's also basically uh, used in skipping some expensive calculations in your component and it helps in memoizing a function as well so basically this hook that is the use memo hook and the use callback hook our performance optimization uh, hooks in your uh, app component or in any particular component so basically the help in improving the performance of your app right so let's understand this hook with the help of an example over here so basically over here we are trying to calculate the factorial of whatever the input over here is so basically factor or factorial of one is going to be one and beneath that we have a button which uh, where we have on click and basically at the top we have initialized two states one is the number and the second one is the uh, state for increasing the counter value and here we have the factorial function right uh, here we have initialized the uh, calculate factorial function and the value would be stored inside of the factorial because we are returning it over here so inside the fact uh, function calculate factorial it's going to take in a value to calculate and basically we are, we are making use of the recursive method that is n star calculate factorial of n minus 1 and we are calculating it over here right and uh, to the input we have on change that is whatever value we are choosing over here that is with the help of the arrows that is going to be uh, that is going to get selected and for that particular number we are going to choose the we are going to you know calculate the factorial as you can see f pass number over here so now let's see what exactly is going to happen if at all i refresh the app so as you can see factor uh, on the initial render factorial of one is one so what happened is it's going to calculate the factorial so it's going to go to directly line number eight so const factorial equals to calculate factorial of number which in our case is one on the initial render so it would go to this function so this would basically return one because factorial of one is one and that is getting re-rendered i mean that is getting rendered over here so as you can see we are able to see that console message in the console over here so let me increase the value to be two so as you can see again it uh it ran that is a function ran that is calculate factorial and factorial of 2 is 2 okay so that is working absolutely fine so 4 is 24 and so on it goes up to the next value as well so now the next thing we'll be looking into is we have the button that is a re-render what is going to happen if i press on re-render so on the re-render button we have on click initialized okay so on the on click we are basically trying to increase the value of uh, this particular state so initially it's zero if i press on re-render it's going to become one right so as you can see if i press on re-render something is going to happen that is the state is going to get updated from zero to one so as we all know uh, as the state updates from zero to one in this case the, co the entire component is going to get re-rendered so let's see what's going to happen so i'm going to press on re-render let, let me clear the console and re-render so as you can see in the console we are able to see that factorial called again which means this function is getting called again calculate factorial even though it is not required right so as you can see again if i press on read under again it's being called so let's just imagine instead of the calculate factorial we have some huge function let's say we need to calculate the sum up to a million of numbers right from zero to, to one million so that would take a lot of time right and it and, and it would also you know reduce the performance of this particular app component and it, and it would uh, gradually slow down the app as well so as you can see if i press on re-render it is again calling the entire component so with the help of use memo hook we can prevent that re-rendering of the component and we can increase that performance uh, of this particular component or the entire app so now instead of uh, using this i'm going to make use of the use memo hook over here so the syntax is similar to use uh, effect hook so i'm going to say use memo over here i'm going to call my calculate factorial function which is going to take in the number and over here it's going to have the dependency array and i'm going to uh, uh, pass in something in inside the dependency array that is going to be number so here i'm going to here i'm going to say call the calculate factorial function if and only if the number changes so when is the number going to change if at all we press on either one of the arrows either if you press on down it's going to go to three if you press on up it's going to go to five right so if and only if that happens then only call the 
calculate factorial function or any any other expensive function that is present in your app else do not uh, call this function basically uh, pre pre prevent this from re-rendering again right so let me clear the console and now currently factorial of 4 is 24 let's press on re-render nothing should happen in the console yeah so basically just the state value should be increased from 1 to 2 so let's give that a try i'm gonna press on re-render i mean let's save the file once yeah let's uh clear the console and let's press on re-render so as you can see we are not able to see anything in the console now i'm going to change the number it's one now i'm going to make it to be two now only the factorial function is going to get called as you can see now if i, if I press on re-render nothing is going to happen because the number value has not changed only this particular value has changed that is the uh, value of this that because we have a on click given over here that is this function yeah so that's the way the use memo hook works so it basically helps in skipping uh, i mean it basically helps in preventing the re-rendering of components when it's not required okay so yeah that's it about the use memo hook so now let's move on to the next hook that is the use ref hook so now let's move on to the next hook that is the use ref hook so basically this use ref hook allows you to persist different kinds of values between your re-renders and it does not cause re-renders that's the first use case of this and the second use case is it's also helpful to access your dom elements so we'll be understanding through both the use cases so let's uh, go to the first one that is it does not cause your re-renders so first of all inside of my app component i'm going to initialize my counter with the help of use state so i'm going to say const counter comma set counter equals to use state and initially i'm going to pass in a value of zero okay so inside over here i'm going to access my input so type is going to be a number okay so here i'm gonna initialize my value so i'm gonna say const value comma set value equals to use state here also initially it's gonna be zero so input is gonna take in a value prop so i'm gonna say value is gonna be value itself and we have the on change text on change method such that whatever the user is uh, changing inside of the input field we're gonna set to that particular value so here i'm gonna say going to take in an event so here we are just going to say set the value to be e dot targets dot value okay so let's save the file so as you can see you have that input uh, being stored over here right so after that we are going to display a count value in the fetch true tag so I'm going to say count value is going to be whatever is there inside of the counter which is initially zero right so save the file so as you can see counter value is zero so now I'm going to initialize my use effect so I'm going to say use effect so here I'm just going to run the use effect every once there is a state update in the component so uh, I'm just not going to pass anything over here I'm just going to leave it as is and inside the use effect I'm going to execute this thing so i'm going to say set counter access the previous value and increase it by one so essentially what should happen so essentially this piece of code should get into an infinite loop so let's understand how that is occurring right so currently we have the input over here so currently we are uh, seeing the value of zero which is okay and when the initial render happens here it's going to render zero okay and also uh, we also know that on the initial render user effect is going to get triggered off so set counter is going to get increased from 0 to 1 so since the state is updated again the component uh, is going to get re-rendered right so if if it is going to get re-rendered again this use effect is going to get triggered off because the uh, the line start executing right from the top to bottom so again the count value is going to become uh, is going to change from 1 to 2 and it's going to get re-rendered over here again and since again there is a state update again we are going to see the component being re-rendered so let's save the file once so as you can see it has gone into an infinite loop right so we do not want that right so to prevent that we're going to make use of the uh, use ref hook which actually prevents the re-rendering so to do that first of all so here i'm going to initialize my use ref so i'm going to say const number equals to use ref import that from react and here also i'm just going to pass in 
initial value of zero. So now let's understand what exactly the user of is gonna return, right? So to do that, I'm just gonna say console.log of number. So this user of is gonna basically return as an object inside which we have the current value. So let's save the file and let's open up our console over here. So as you can see, in the console, you should be seeing the current, as you can see inside of the object, we have the current value, which is set to be zero because we have passed an empty value of zero to the user f. So now the next thing we'll be looking into is how can we prevent the re-rendering, right? So again, I'm going to initialize my same code that is use effect. So previously we were just doing set counter of whatever the previous value is and we were increasing it by one. So here we're going to access the number. So to access this particular zero, which is inside of an object, we're going to make use of the dot property. So to access this zero, it's going to be number dot current, right? So here I'm going to say number dot current equals to number dot current plus one. Okay. So that's it. And here as well, we're going to make the change instead of rendering the counter, I'm going to render the original value. Uh, so again, it's going to be the same thing. So to access the value, it's going to be number dot current. So I'm just going to render that over here. So number dot current. So yep, let's save the file. Current is not defined. Okay. Okay. My bad over here. We have written plus instead of the dot operator. Yeah, so now let's give this a try. So as soon as I, you know, increase the value, it's going to increase the counter value to two. As you can see, that's looking better. It's working fine. So now if any kind of state update happens, it's going to work fine. So if now, if I, if I remove one, it's going to again, increase the counter by one. So if you again increase it, it's going to increase it over here as well. So that's working absolutely fine. So this is the way we can, you know, prevent the re-renders in your component. So the next thing we'll be looking into is we're going to initialize the uh buttons as well as one more thing so that we can access the dom elements we'll just be trying to focus on the input so here i'm going to say input and type is going to be text over here and i'm going to initialize my input feed input ref so i'm going to say const input equals to use ref and initially it will be pointing to null so just consider this input like it's going to be some kind of a pointer that is pointing to something in the screen so in our case it will be pointing to the input field itself and here i'm just going to say button and i'm going to say focus focus input something like this so as i told we're going to give the reference to this which is going to be input so currently in this case input is going to be some kind of pointer that is pointing to this entire input field so i'm going to save the file so for the button we're going to give the on click so i'm going to say on click uh, here I'm just going to initialize focus input function. So focus input, let me define the function over here. So I'm going to say const focus input equals to a, no a normal arrow function. And here what I'm going to do is first of all, I'm going to access my input over here. And we all know that we have the current value. So I'm going to say input dot current. We have the focus method to focus. So I'm just going to say dot focus just like this. So now let's save the file. And as soon as I press on the focus button, you should be able to see the input field being focused because we've given the reference over here. So let's give this a try. So as you can see, as, as soon as I press the focus button, our input is focused. So if you want, you can check out in the console, that is whatever is stored inside of input. And there are a bunch of methods which you can explore. So currently we are just uh, gonna see in console.log of input. So let's open up the console once. So again, as you can see, it is in the form of an object and inside the current value, we have the input, right? So as you can see, now this particular input is uh, pointing to the input field that we have, as you can see over here in the console, right? So as you can see, we have a bunch of values, we can use it and we can implement that. If you want, you can even change the background color and we have many on events like on drag, on, uh, on context, on click, on hover. So you can use all of that and you can try it out to access the DOM elements, right? So that's the way this thing works. I think there is also one more thing to, you know, access the background color. If you press on that, yeah, so you can go through all of these values that are present and explore each one of them. Okay. And yeah, that's the basic features of use ref hook. So in our projects, we have used use ref hook previously. Like if you, if you had followed the previous food delivery application, like while rendering the map view, we had given something known as the reference to the map view. And then we had rendered the map. Also, we had given the reference to the scroll view. 
like at the bottom we had displayed a bunch of sub menus and if we would press on that based on the reference and based on the animation that we have implemented we had given the reference to the entire scroll view so it's uh, so it scrolls to that particular sub menu when we press on it so based on some specific height we were able to implement that so that's the basic use cases of the use ref so now let's move on to the next hook that is the use callback hook so now let's move on to the next hook that is the use callback hook so basically the use callback hook helps to improve the performance of your react components so this is the hook which is similar to the other one which we which we just explored that is the use memo hook right so basically use memo hook is used to memoize the values whereas the use callback hook is used to memoize the functions so basically the use callback hook does this by memoizing the callback functions and it prevents the unnecessary re-renders of your react component so we'll understand this with the help of a better example so here i've just initialized my state that is count and set count and we basically have a hand click function which is just gonna update the state from 0 to 1 or whatever the value is initially and inside my return block we are showing the count and we are gonna render the button component and inside the button component we are just gonna uh, write in increment right and we are gonna have a on click over here which is gonna be handle click and we have defined the button component over here it's gonna take in two things the on click and the children as props so basically children we are rendering it over here which is basically increment and on click is gonna be on click and we basically and we basically have a console.log button over here I mean console.log of a basic text which says button rendered so now let's understand this scenario better right so basically in this scenario what happens is this particular app component re-renders a button component and maintains a count state that is this particular one so initially there is no use callback hook used right so without that use callback hook each time this app re-renders a new handle click function is created that is this one which is present okay so basically this triggers the re-render of the button component so inside the console we should be seeing this one button re-rendered as well as button clicked so this basically happens even if the props have not changed right so that's the scenario without the use callback hook so let's quickly open up our console once and we're gonna check it so we should be seeing button rendered and then button clicked as well so let's head over to the console let's press an increment over here so as you can see you're able to see button clicked and then button rendered so button clicked and button rendered so here without the callback uh, as, as i already told this particular app re-renders so this basically triggers the re-render of your button component even if the props have not been changed so that's the case over here without the use callback so now let's use uh, let's use the use callback hook and memoize the function so it it, it improves the uh, performance of your app component so now we're going to go over here and i'm going to remove this and i'm going to initialize my hand click function with the help of the use callback hook so again i'm going to initialize my use callback hook so the syntax is going to be similar to the use effect hook so here i'm going to give the console.log message which says button check or button click and again i'm going to say set the count access the previous count whatever it is present and just increase it by one so i'm going to say previous count plus one yeah, so as I told, the use callback hook syntax is similar to the use effect hook. It's going to take in a callback function and we're going to have something known as the dependency array. So in this case, we're going to use the use callback hook. That's the second scenario. So while using the use callback hook, basically whatever the function that is present, the hand click function is going to get memoized, right? So it only changes if at all any, any of the dependencies inside of the dependency array is changed, then only it's going to uh, be called again. So that's the way we're going to memoize the hand click function by using the use callback hook over here so in our case as you can see we basically have an empty dependency array right so this basically indicates that this particular hand click function does not depend on any values from the components scope right so what happens is basically the hand click remains same across the re-renders that's going to happen as long as this particular app is mounted so basically this kind of optimization helps in different cases while passing callbacks to your child components and can cause unnecessary re-renders as well. So by memoizing the callback with basically the use callback hook, we can ensure that the reference to your callback is gonna remain proper and it's gonna remain stable as well, unless its dependencies have changed, okay? So thus we can optimize the performance of your React application or your component by making use of the use callback hook. So in the console, if you try out again also, after implementing the use callback, nothing is gonna change, it's gonna show the same thing as well. 
So as I told this console.log log message is, is of course going to get re-rendered inside of the button component because whenever the app component re-renders, each render of the app will re-render its child component. So basically this button component is going to get re-rendered and basically the console.log log message is seeing on the is being seen in the console. So basically however the call, uh, the use callback hook that we have used is optimizing the hand click function to prevent unnecessary recreation of the function itself. Okay, so it, but it doesn't prevent your button component from re-rendering because that is a normal behavior in React. As you all know that if at all the parent re-renders, its child component is also going to get re-rendered. So in this case, button is a child component. So of course, we are going to re-render this and we should be seeing again the button re-rendered in the console. So if you want to, you know, prevent the button component from being re-rendered unnecessarily, you can, you can of course use the use memo hook and memoize that particular thing. So that's a basic understanding of the use callback hook with this particular simple example. Okay, so yeah, it's basically used to memoize the required function and it improves the performance of your React component. So we've explored about all the important five hooks that are present with uh, each of the example in a simple way. So the remaining hooks that are present, uh, the, the, that is the new hooks. Uh, we're gonna make uh, another video on that and we're gonna again explore with the help of the example. So these are the five mostly commonly used hooks in react while building your projects okay so hope you find this useful so i think that's it about this video so let's see in the next video and then thank you for watching